Hi crafters! In this video I'm going to experiment with techniques and I'll be adding some hot foiling to the tissue paper. Then I'll also be demonstrating how to add tissue paper to your handmade cards. So let's get started! Let's do the foiling first. I have preheated my Gemini foil press, then I'm placing my foiling die on top. This one is a Seaside Frame by Couture Creations. Then we place a piece of gold foil face down, just as we always do. Then of course I'm adding my tissue paper. The one I'm using is from packaging. The important thing to keep in mind when you're foiling the tissue paper is that you have to add the shims. In this case, I'm adding one sheet of cardstock. You might want to add two. And this way you are making the entire sandwich the normal thickness. Then, of course, I'm sending the entire sandwich through my Gemini Junior die cutting machine. You can use any foiling machine that you have with this technique. So this is how the foiling turned out. I think I got a perfect foil transfer. Also notice that although the paper is super thin, I didn't get any warping at all. I think that hot foiling is a perfect technique for thin papers, unlike heat embossing that can cause massive warping. I will set aside my foiled piece for now and I'm going to create a die cut panel for my card. This piece of white cardstock is 4.5 by 6.5 inches. I'm placing one die from Timeless Panels die set on top of it so that uh, the borders from three sides are the same thickness. And this is what the die cut uh, panel looks like. This pattern is totally expandable, so I'm going to place the die over my panel again and I'm going to send it through the machine for the second time. As always, if you are interested in the tools and supplies I'm using, I have them listed down below in the description box as well as on my blog. So this is how you can create a die cut background of any size, only paying for the border die. Now let's go back to our foiled tissue paper. My idea here was to create some torn edges to add more interesting texture to the project. What I'm doing now is I'm cutting around the top edge of the foiled frame with my scissors. Then I'm going to tear off the rest of the paper. As you are cutting the frame out, you don't have to be really precise, because the paper is so thin and transparent, no one is going to see those details. And then I'm going to repeat the same process on the opposite side of the frame. I have cut out the frame at the bottom just partially and then I'm tearing off the remaining paper. And this is what we should end up with at the moment. By the way, this paper is actually larger than my die cut panel. You'll see that later on. I'm centering uh, my foiled tissue paper on the die cut panel and then I'm going to wrap the excess paper around the edges of the panel. Then I'm going to use my stapler's stapler to attach uh, the tissue paper to the panel. This fun little device uh, leaves uh, just some score marks at the edges of paper and this way the two sheets are held together. So I'm inserting the wrapped edge of the panel into the stapler and pressing it down. I'm going to repeat this process a few times on both sides and this way I'm adding just a tiny bit of extra texture. 
So this is the great way to attach uh, the transparent paper to the cardstock without using any adhesive that might show through. I hope you can also see the tiny score marks on camera. I have used my nested circles die set to create a thin frame out of gold mirror cardstock. This frame fits inside the gold foiled frame just fine. Then I'm going to use uh, a circle die, the same one that I used for the inside of the frame, to die cut a circle window in my card. As you are taping down the circle, make sure you are applying the tape only inside that circle. This way you are not going to tear the tissue paper. I have sent the panel through the die cutting machine and I've die cut through the tissue paper and through the die cut panel at one go. Now I am applying a tiny amount of glue between the tissue paper and the cardstock just around the edges of the circle window and this way I'm going to hold these pieces together. Then I'm also attaching a golden frame on top. By the way, I'm using Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue in a precision applicator bottle. This glue is not too watery and it doesn't cause a lot of warping. At this point, I have decided to back up my panel with the gold mirror cardstock. So I'm placing it on top of a gold sheet, leaving a thin border, and then I'm also tracing the circle window with uh, the pencil. Then again, I'm going to use a circle die to die cut this window. This is what it should look like after die cutting. I have applied some thin 1 8 of an inch double sided tape all around the perimeter of my panel at the wrong side. I have also applied some tiny pieces just around the circle window and then I'm sticking down my panel onto the golden background. Then I'm going to use my uh, guillotine paper trimmer and trim off uh, the remaining golden cardstock, only leaving a border about one eighth of an inch. I have created a card base that is 5 by 7 inches. The cardstock I used is one of my favorites. It's called Barely Gray and it's just uh, slightly darker than white. I'm going to attach my panel onto this card base using the foam squares. The ones that I'm using are 3 millimeters thick, that is almost 1 eighth of an inch. Now I'm going to create a little scene to go inside the circle window. I'll be using the lily pad dies. They are from Into the Pond die set by Paper Discovery. These dies have some raised areas in the center and those are meant for embossing. But the thing is you can use these dies for hot foiling as well. Gemini hot foiling machine allows you to do the foiling and die cutting at one go. And this is exactly what I'm going to do, so I'm building up a proper sandwich. You can also use these dies with any other hot foiling machine, but in that case you will just have to do the foiling first and then go with the die cutting. You can see that I got some overfoiling around the edges. You can just take the eraser and erase all the extra foil if you want to, but I kind of like the effect. It looks like shading to me, so I decided to keep it. Then I've die cut some water lilies out of pink cardstock. The dies are from the same set as the lily pads. Then I'm going to arrange both flowers and leaves inside the circle frame. I'm just playing around with all the die cuts and once I'm happy with their placement, I'm sticking them down inside the window using the liquid glue. 
as the finishing touch I'm going to decorate my uh, foiled frame with some pearls and I'm going to use half pearls of three sizes big medium and small I'm using the same adhesive Ranger Multimedia Matte which is perfect for attaching embellishments as well and I'm also using the pickup pencil it's a very handy tool and uh, very inexpensive as well you can attach as many or as few pearls as you want to you can even go completely without pearls but today I'm going to go crazy with them I'll be attaching lots and lots of pearls all around the foiled frame and all around the circle window as well and this is what the finished card looks like it turned out to be not too bulky and it can totally be mailed in an envelope although it has lots and lots of uh, layers especially around the circle window I also like that the die cut layer is showing through the tissue paper and of course I like all the pearls by the way, I used the same uh, foiling die on my previous project, but that time I used silver foil, printed vellum and just a few pearls. If you want to see that project as well, please check out my previous tutorial. I'll put a link down below in the description. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and uh, I hope you will find some tips and tricks useful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye!